Welcome back with Lovers, it's Tommy's Tamworths. It's a stunning day here in North Yorkshire and uh, it's getting to that time of year where the workshop is heating up. It is 24.3 degrees Celsius in here and uh, we've got a long summer of that kind of temperature ahead, which is not ideal for woodworking, but we, we shall persist because what the hell else am I going to do? Today we are looking at a we are looking at one of my very favourite woods. It is a wood that has a huge amount of personal significance for me. It is Diaspiros celebica. That's right, Macassar ebony. I have a very precariously taped together set of Macassar ebony. This is actually a four-piece back. So Macassar ebony is less of a tree and more of a shrub. Um, the, the average kind of diameter of a Macassar ebony tree is like 40 centimeters. They don't typically grow anything above 20 meters tall. You know, it's not a huge tree. And so uh, it's very difficult to get sets big enough to do a, uh, a just a single book matched set. So this is a book match twice. It's cut down, cut once. And, uh, <laughs> and open like this, and then cut again and open like that. So it's kind of a concertina effect. And that is the kind of only way that you're able to get um, usable boards wide enough to do, uh, to do guitar sets and maintain this kind of striped look in, in anything resembling uh, something close to quarters on. Uh, Macassar ebony, it comes from Sulawesi, an Indonesian island. And uh, it's so named because uh, it is exported by, um, ex exported from the seaport city of Makassar. Now this word I first came across, well, when I was a, when I was a young pup um, at school learning about um, art deco design. Macassar ebony was, uh, was heavily used during the, the kind of art deco period for furniture, for cabinetry. Um, and, and it always caught my eye as just something really beautiful. Subsequently, when I was training as a cabinet maker, one of the first projects I worked on was a, a, pair, of um, a pair of hall tables, very beautiful um, and uh, very elaborate and ornate pieces. I'll put a picture. That was when I was working at the Rupert McBain studio in County Durham. They were, they were a kind of tour de force of, of kind of precision cabinet making continuous grain, all this kind of thing, all from beautiful saw cut veneers. Things that were actually pieces of wood that were kind of similar thickness to, to what I'm holding here. So on the Janker scale, we are, it is a hard one. It is a hard mofo. 3,220 on the Janker scale. So that's harder than African ebony. It sits just behind pink ivory, which we covered in a previous video. So it makes it really good especially for things like fingerboards and bridges with an average dried weight of 1,120. So more dense than water. Do not build your boats out of Macassar ebony because they're going to sink. Now this set, I believe, was, was gifted to me by Rory Dowling. Um, I know the sides certainly were. Maybe the back came from somewhere else. Either way, I really like this set. The sides are a little on the skinny side um, this, I think, uh, was a classical set. Um, so what I'm going to have to do with this is, um, is laminate the sides, which I do anyway. But laminating the sides will enable me to buy a little bit of extra room, which will ultimately get covered up by the binding. So um, classical sides can be made to work on a Western size uh, acoustic. And uh, it, pre it presents a couple of extra challenges, but who doesn't like a challenge? And uh, these sides are so nice that uh, it would be a shame just to use them for head veneers or something like that. I would like to keep these as sides and um, build it into a, into a full guitar. The first guitar that I built on my return from my apprenticeship in California was a Macassar Ebony Model L. It was the very first Model L. It had an Italian spruce soundboard. Uh, it was an absolute beast. It, it's... Um, we went with Macassar Ebony, the client wanted, uh, he wanted something Rosewood-like, but with the, with the kind of overtone content dialed down. Traditionally, 
Macassar Ebony is is kind of considered to be some somewhat of an of an inert tonewood. It's not contributing a huge amount to the the system, and the idea being that you're kind of really getting a true voice of the soundboard with no added spice or flavour. I don't know if I completely agree with that um, because at least in the way that I typically build where the back is active, the, the, the Macassar Ebony definitely does offer something. And um, you know, again, you can hear just by, by handling this wood that it, that it does have a sound. Albeit, I'm not gonna be able to give you a, a massively accurate representation of the, the tap tone, or at least one, not one that uh, is comparable to the rest of the videos in this series. But to heck with it, I'm gonna tap it anyway, and you can, you can give it a listen and, and see what you think. Now that sustains for a hell of a long time, which you'd expect, expect from a hard, dense wood. Now make sure you've got your headphones on or you're sitting next to a really nice speaker. The decay is really smooth and it goes on forever. But that's got a really pleasing ring to it, right? If you go back and listen to the, uh, the video I did about Crelicamp Ebony, which is the West African Ebony from Cameroon, you may get a similar picture, but I think this has just got a little bit more um, response, in the way of response. Anyway, there you go. That is, that is the tap response of this small piece of Macassar Ebony. And I'm gonna try and... <laughs> oh man, it is difficult working with um, a taped up four piece back. How does a four piece back impact the sound of your instrument? Does it make a difference? Some people think that, you know, multi-piece backs should be frowned upon, that they are not, um, that they are not going to perform in, in, in the way that uh, a conventional back is. But a conventional back is a multi-piece back. It's two pieces of wood. And a four-piece back or a multi-piece back or, you know, three-piece back, six-piece back even, if it is nicely quarter-sawn, if the wood is stable, and if you've done a really good job with your jointing and your gluing, and you've done that carefully, then there's no problem. Arguably, it's gonna give you a better back, something that's more stable and more responsive. So if anyone tells you that multi-piece backs are whack, tell them to shut up. I'm talking to you, multi-piece back haters. I'm gonna give this beautiful multi-piece back a, uh, a blast with the magic spray. And we're gonna go, we're gonna have a look at the full glory, the full wonder of this Macassar Ebony set because it is truly one of the most stunning woods on the planet. It is so classy and I pray to God this doesn't fall apart as I hold it above the monitor. How glorious is that? It finishes absolutely beautifully due to the the nature of the grain and the structure of the wood. It is just the business. I love it. It is a bugger to bend. It is really difficult, as with quite a lot of ebonies. It, is, it, is, it doesn't want to bend. It wants to stay straight. It would much prefer to be a nice cabinet or a table. But by God, this wood was born to be a guitar. Let's give you a little sense of what these sides are doing. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Now, this is problematic for me doing this because now, this is the only Macassar Ebony set that I've got. Now I'm, now I'm hunting. Now I've had a little taste. Look at that. Just that, ah oh man, that is 
so gorgeous. It almost, the orangey brown almost glows. Yeah, it's just really subtle and, and, and understated. It is amazing. Now, Macassar Ebony is, is difficult to get hold of. It's highly regulated. It's a slow, going, slow growing tree. It's not huge. So uh, we've got to be careful with it. We've got to treat it with respect and appreciate where it comes from. And uh, it's just blows my mind. Whew, there's a lot of booze on that set of wood now. And that has gone right to my head. So, so concludes, do you know what? Yeah, got a couple of really beautiful Macassar Ebony fingerboards. I'm using it a lot for bindings at the moment. Bindings, fingerboards with continuous grain head plates and matching bridges. With something like Redwood, it looks so gorgeous. A really kind of earthy tone. Look at that. Beautiful for fingerboards. Isn't that nice? Well, I think, I think you can tell that I'm pretty in love with Macassar Ebony. It's like my childhood sweetheart. And uh, I feel very fortunate that I have some in my collection. I would like some more. <laughs> my, if my credit card company will allow me. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment. It all helps the channel. Next week, I know I said I would see you on Monday. Today is whatever day you want it to be. But the next, I think the next series, the next run of shows is going to be a Rosewood World Cup. Don't know exactly what that's going to look like. But I think we're going to do a Rosewood Rundown. See you soon.